the chain rule for polynomials and power functions, also known as the chain rule for functions raised to a power. So in this section, we'll explore functions whose outside function was a polynomial or power function, which means that the resulting function is something that's raised to a power of some sort. So consider the function y equals 3x plus 4 raised to the 10th power. What we need to do is we need to rewrite these and separate out the outside function and the inside function using what we learned in the first video. So we're going to rewrite this as y equals z to the 10th, where z equals 3x plus 4. What you're going to find is a common theme throughout our process is that we're going to be identifying z as our inside function if we were to decompose the function. So we have to figure out what z is. And then we're able to rewrite the original function as z to the power that we have in our function. So here we have y equals z to the 10th and z equals 3x plus 4. Remember from before that if we want the derivative of y with respect to x, the original derivative, we can take the derivative of y with respect to z times the derivative of z with respect to x. So let's find each of those pieces. The derivative of y with respect to z means we're going to the function where y is our dependent variable and z is our independent variable. When we take that derivative, we use our power rule and we get 10z to the ninth. We also need to find dz dx, the derivative of z with respect to x. So now we're looking for the function where z is our dependent variable and x is our independent variable. So that's our 3x plus 4. When we take the derivative of 3x plus 4, we just get 3. So now our rule says we're going to multiply these two derivatives together. So dy dx is going to equal 10z to the ninth times 3. Now, whenever we have constants that are multiplied together in part of a function here, we can combine them for simplicity. So we're going to multiply that 10 and that 3 together to give me 30. But now I have z to the ninth. I don't want z in my final answer because the final answer wants me to have something that relates y and x. So that means for my last step, I'm going to go back and plug in what z represents in terms of x. So here, because it's more than one term, I have to be sure to use parentheses. So 3x plus 4 to the ninth power. So my final derivative of the original function, 3x plus 4 raised to the 10th, is 30 times 3x plus 4 to the 9th. Let's look at another. Example 1. Find the derivative of y equals f of x equals 3 minus x cubed all raised to the 7th. So again, we see that we're going to have to do a chain rule here because we're certainly not going to multiply this out to the 7th power. If it was squared, we could multiply it out and go term by term. But since it's to the 7th power, we know that we have an inside and outside function. So our first step is to figure out what our inside function was. So here my inside function that got plugged in is 3 minus x cubed. So that means I can rewrite my y function as z to the 7th. Remember, these have the structure of polynomials and power functions. So your y function should be something raised to a power. And we're using z as the letter we're using for substituting. You don't have to use z. You could use u, you could use w, or any other letter that you see fit to substitute in. So here, we now need to find dy dz and dz dx. If we can find these derivatives, we can multiply them together to get the derivative we want, dy dx. So dy dz, I'm going to come over to my z to the 7th, and I'm going to take the derivative using my power rule. So I get 7z to the 6th. And then dz dx, I'm going to come over to my relationship between z and x. And when I take the derivative, I get 0 for the derivative of 3 and minus 3x squared for the derivative of x. So now I need to multiply these two things together to get dy dx, which is the derivative I'm interested in. So I have 7z to the 6th times negative 3x squared. So again, I'm going to multiply my constants together here. 
So 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. Now my z, I know I don't want a z in my final answer, so I'm going to plug back in what it represents. Again, I have to use parentheses because the whole entire function is raised to the power. So I get 3 minus x cubed to the 6th power times, and then I still have an x squared. So my final derivative takes on the form negative 21 times 3 minus x cubed all raised to the 6th power times x squared. So now I can see what my derivative is in terms of y and x because I was able to use the chain rule to substitute in. There's a little bit of a shortcut that we can use here if we'd like, and it looks like this. If z is a differentiable function of x, then the derivative of z to the n equals nz to the n minus 1 times dz dx. So what that means is if we can identify what z is, our inside function, we can cut out one step and make our process a little bit quicker. So here, if I'm thinking about what my z is, I'm thinking about what's raised to the power. So here, that would be sine x plus 2. I'm also going to need dz dx, so I'll write that right underneath it dz dx, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of 2 is 0. So the beauty of this is it says that I can bring the power down and leave z in. So what I'm going to do when I find my derivative here is I'm going to bring the 5 out front. Everything inside stays the same. And I'm going to subtract 1 from the power. So that is this piece right here, nz to the n minus 1. So that means my power comes down and I subtract 1 from the power. But the inside remains exactly the same. But then I have to remember to multiply that by dz dx. So I said that dz dx here was cosine x, the derivative of the inside. So again, I'm not going to do any other simplifications here because the 5 and the cosine aren't like terms. I don't have constants to multiply, so I can leave my final answer just like this. The only difference here is I saved one step by not rewriting y in terms of z. You can do it either way, and you'll get the same answer. If you do it this way, it's a little bit more efficient because you cut out one step. Let's look at another. Example 3. Find the derivative of y equals e to the x plus x squared minus 1 all to the negative 3 power. So here, the key to any first step of a chain rule is identifying what the inside function is. So here I consider what has been raised to the power. So here, I'm going to have z equals e to the x plus x squared minus 1. So I know that I'm going to need my derivative, dz dx, as part of my answer. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And the derivative of 1 is 0. So now, when I'm calculating my derivative, I've done all my side work. I just want to deal with the power. So my negative 3 comes down in front. Everything inside stays the same. And I'm going to subtract 1 from the power. So negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. The key to this shortcut is that everything inside stays the same. It stays as z. So e to the x plus x squared minus 1. But then I have to remember that I need to multiply that by dz dx, the derivative of the inside. Because there's more than one term, it's very, very, very important that I use parentheses here. So this is times e to the x plus 2x. So my final answer looks like this. But I really, really, really want to caution you. If you don't use parentheses on that final term, so you have negative 3 e to the x plus x squared minus 1 to the negative 4 times... And if you write e to the x plus 2x with no parentheses, that is not the same thing, okay? That is not the same answer because that first term, it's only multiplying the e to the x and not the plus 2x. And our rule says it has to multiply the entire derivative. So be really careful with your parentheses. Whenever you have more than one term, I urge you to put them in. Let's look at another example. Example 4. Find the equation of the tangent line to f of x equals the square root of 3x plus 10 at x equals 2. So we've done equation of a tangent line problems before, but now our derivative involves the chain rule. So remember, in order to get 
the equation of a line, we're going to need the point and we're going to need the slope. And we're interested in what's happening at x equals 2. So we need f of 2 and f prime of 2. f of 2, we're just plugging 2 into our function. So we have the square root of 3 times 2 plus 10, which gives me the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is 4, which means that the point where my tangent line touches my function is the point 2, 4. And that's the point I'm interested when I'm looking for the equation of my tangent line. I also need to find the slope at 2. The slope means that I need to find the first derivative of my function. So notice here that I can rewrite my original function. So here, f of x will equal 3x plus 10 to the 1 half power. Whenever we have square roots, we rewrite them to the 1 half power when we want to take derivatives so that we can get that number in there and we can use our power rule. Unfortunately, it's not just x to the 1 half, but instead 3x plus 10 to the 1 half. However, we have the tools now that we need to find this derivative. So again, we're going to start by figuring out what z is. So z is the inside function, or the function that's raised to the power, which is 3x plus 10. We also need dz dx, the derivative of that function. The derivative of 3x is 3, and the derivative of 10 is 0 which means that now when I go to put my derivative together, I can deal with the power first. Power comes down in front, everything inside stays the same, and I subtract one from the power. So that's the outside part. That's our nz to the n minus one. But I have to remember to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, or my dz dx. And so that is gonna be three which means my derivative is 1 half times 3x plus 10 to the negative 1 half times 3. I can simplify this a little bit as I go, but remember, I need to figure out what the derivative is at 2. So if I pull that 3 in front, I get 3 halves times 1 over the square root of 3x plus 10. I did that in a couple steps all at once. So just to review, I multiplied the 3 and the 1 half together to get the 3 halves. If you have a negative power of a function, you can put it in the denominator. So 3x plus 10 to the negative half is the same thing as 1 over 3x plus 10 to the half. Something to the half power is the same thing as the square root. So I put the square root symbol back in to make our calculation a little bit easier. So now I have to substitute in a 2 for x. When I do that, I get 3 halves times 1 over the square root of 3 times 2 is 6 plus 10 is 16. So again, I get the square root of 16, which is 4. So 3 halves times 1 fourth will give me 3 eighths. And again, that's the slope of the tangent line. Putting together what I know, I have y equals 3 eighths x plus b. If I substitute in my point, 2, 4, my 4 goes in for y, and my 2 goes in for x plus b. So I have 4 equals 6 eighths plus b. So I subtract 6 eighths from both sides, get a common denominator, and I get b equals 26 eighths, or if you want to simplify that, you can write it as 13 fourths. Either way is fine. But now I have my b and I have my slope so I can get the equation of my tangent line. So my tangent line here is going to be y equals 3 eighths x plus 13 fourths. So again, the process of how we find it is the same as we'd previously been doing it, but now when we needed to find the slope of our tangent line using the derivative, we had to use the chain rule.